Good afternoon, and how delightful it is to follow you, Yannick, actually, because that is not the title of my talk. This is the title of my talk, and it's absolutely in conversation with what you just said. Um, so really what I want to ask today here is, why is it so hard to talk about the body in philosophy? But you might say, you might say, in particular, in particular Maya, philosophy talks about the body all the time. And I would say, and probably fumble around in my words and say, but you know, really talk about the body. And even Judith Butler, who has had so much to say about the body, has admitted that, quote, the vocational difficulty for those trained in philosophy, always at some distance from corporeal matters, is that they can invariably miss the body, or worse, right against it. So I suggest to you that it's hard to talk about the body in philosophy because the dominant knowledge paradigm is so deeply rooted in language that it cannot comprehend embodiment and its value. I also suggest that theater and dance as embodied practices have something to offer a new embodied epistemological paradigm. Now I don't mean just to keep borrowing our practices and structures for metaphors like life is a stage, right? We can thank Shakespeare for that, of course. But really, I mean to investigate our practices and excavate our principles that are founded on and born from embodiment. So, here's an example. The 20th century French theater artist, Jacques Lecoq, founded his actor training methods on the practice of identification. And in identification, the actor takes something outside of herself, perhaps a chair or an animal or even something imagined. Uh, for instance, a blazing forest fire, something that's not right there in the room. And then she moves through a three-step process of seeing, embodying, and applying. So if the actor practices identification with, say, a blazing forest fire, first she would see it, which means that she would be in the studio imagining all the ways she could and could not move around this fire. She might begin by minding how do you start a fire and how would this fire grow and what is her relationship to this fire? How can she approach it? How is she limited to having contact with it? This is seeing her relationship to the fire. Second, she would embody it. So again, in the space, she would gradually become that blazing forest fire, which means that she would adopt the rhythm, the space, the sounds, the patterns of movement of the fire. Where does it reach the highest point? Where does it smolder on the ground? And third, she would apply it. In the context of the theater, she might apply the embodied lesson to a character whose anger flares in a particular pattern with a particular kind of speech and a physicality to match. Or she might apply it to the overall structure of a scene. So how might the scene's conflict grow in that same pattern that the forest fire grew, the one that she had embodied? What kind of theatrical conflict would be useful to exemplify in this kind of movement of an all-consuming fire, in the stages of this all-consuming fire? So this theatrical knowledge then of identifications and others is specific, it's contextual, and it's multidimensional. It's not all there is to know about fire, but it can still encompass multiple dimensions even in a specific context and takes account of the actor's relationship to that context. So, if Descartes' dictum of I think, therefore I am enables a linguistically based epistemological <coughs> philosophical foundation, Lecoq's epistemological dictum might be I embody, therefore I know, so what kind of philosophy then might that enable? On one level, this is akin to phenomenology, but how might it offer a different kind of richness by valuing not just first-person lived experience, but the possibilities of imaginative and creative embodied encounters of the other as a sort of lived experience through one's body. What are the potentials and the limits of this kind of philosophy that would come from an embodied experience? An embodied paradigm would have to value the way that the body has multi-register access to epistemology. So the challenge 
is not to make the body fit into a linguistic paradigm, which I'm doing here to talk with you today, but the challenge is to shift that paradigm into something that can comprehend and value all of the registers of embodiment. Thank you.